The Guardians made a bunch of roster moves today in preparation for the Rule 5 draft. And there's some things I expected, some things I did not expect. First off, Doug Nikhazy, I'm happy they protected him. He was the number one guy that was unprotected going into this Rule 5 draft that I said had to be protected, in my opinion. They did that. Franco Alamon was another guy up high on my list of someone that they should probably protect, given that he's a Major League Ready reliever. They did that as well. Strezlecki and Gillespie, guys that I kind of expected to be left off the roster, um, and that's not really a big shock to me. They were kind of just extra arms in the bullpen throughout the year. Didn't really show too much, but I think they could probably have another shot in a weaker bullpen this year. Good luck to both of them. But probably the most surprising move is George Valera being left off the 40-man roster. I thought that that was a possibility given that he's been plummeting down the prospect rankings. He's had some character issues. Um, I look back at the time that he tried to fight an ump. And overall, he's really not panned out to the prospect status that he had in the minor leagues. Overall, I didn't really think much of George Valera. I thought at best maybe he could be the evil Oscar Gonzalez. But, I mean, it is definitely surprising that they left him off, given that the two people that they put on the roster um, were Nick Enright and Petey Halpin. I'm not too familiar with Nick Enright, and Petey Halpin is a guy that I highlighted as maybe not Major League ready. Obviously, the Guardians and maybe some other teams around the league think that he is Major League ready, and I would think maybe it's probably because of his glove and um, just, like, approach. But PD hasn't even made it past double A yet, so it's kind of surprising that he was one of the guys that they protected, especially with him not even being that good of a hitter at double A. But the Guardians seem to have some faith in him. He's played quite a bit in spring training, um, so maybe they see something I don't, and I'm going to trust them because they know baseball a bit better than me, just some random guy. Okay, looking more into Nick Enright. He seems to be a major league ready reliever as well. So maybe that's the reasoning there that they wanted to protect him. I mean, I don't hate it. I don't love it. We have a really good bullpen. Don't need to be wasting too many spots on protecting relievers from getting taken in the Rule 5 draft. But, you know, things can change as more players are signed, more players added to the 40-man roster. If my math is right, the 40-man roster is at 40 right now, so moves will have to be made if players are re-signed like Bieber, Boyd, Cobb. If they go out and sign someone like Carlos Santana, I expect maybe Enright would be the first one to go, but who knows? A Josh Naylor trade could also shake a lot of things up. And then for George Valera, it's worth to keep an eye on him. I think there's a good chance he clears waivers. Um, he's really not shown to be someone that really would show major league readiness. And I think that there it would be reasonable for every team in the MLB to say, hey, we don't really want to take a chance on this guy right now. He accepts his assignment to AAA and then he continues to play in the Cleveland organization. At that point, there's also that chance that he chooses to be a free agent and while I say that it would be reasonable for a bunch of teams to not take him, I would. it would make a lot of sense for the White Sox, the A's, the Marlins, teams like that to take a chance on a guy like George Valera, who was at one time a very highly ranked prospect. I don't think that that would be a bad move by them at all. So I guess we'll just have to see. Follow for more updates throughout the offseason. Peace.